Oh, hi everyone, and welcome to the first in a series of videos that will document my underwater adventure. This excursion took place in a lake specially converted for dive training at a place called Diver Cove in Surrey. The purpose of this excursion was a simple training dive to get everyone back in the swing of things after a long break, and in my case also to test my new camera. Here we see everybody getting kitted up. Final body checks before the dive. Usual formula, buoyancy, air releases. Check everything several times over so that we can all avoid any unnecessary difficulties later on. Selfie action now. I was uh, finished a little earlier than most. Got myself fully kitted up. Valve's open. Liam. My dive body, leader of this particular dive, preparing to enter, tested his oxygen, on oh, his mask, right, okay. make sure it is tucked tightly into the hood. Perfect. Valve right. over the shoulder, secure it in the mouth, forward roll entry. My turn. Okay, when you're ready. To probably clarify, this is footage from a later dive, in fact, because I have the camera with me. Giant stride entry. Have your feet just over the edge and simply walk forward. Signal surface and body, you are okay. The other dive tees prepares to launch. And another successful giant stride entry. Always make sure you have plenty of air in your BC before entering, otherwise you'll sink like a stone and look like an idiot. I speak from experience. I follow my dive body to the designated buoy. The good thing about operating in any particular <coughs> designated dive training centre, or indeed any other popular attraction is that very frequently there are markers and guidelines to help divers find their way around and avoid the need for cumbersome navigation instruments. Okay. We're all ready. Signal descend. Holding onto the rope all the way down, we descend into the depths. The lake was not deep, a maximum of seven meters. However, it was extremely murky as is typical for inland waterways. Therefore, do not expect any truly spectacular shots. This was entirely a training exercise and a test of new equipment. It is important to follow the rope and know where your body is, particularly in conditions where it is easy to lose him. I've stuck to Liam like glue for this entire dive, I can assure you. Balance ourselves down on the bottom. We appear to have hit one of the several shape training platforms suspended at certain depths to allow divers to perform training exercises at a fixed depth. I would later use these same platforms for training exercises for which I did not have my camera, as it would have been a hindrance. Liam was equipped somewhat differently to myself. You may have noticed his suit looked somewhat more baggy. That is because his, unlike mine, is a dry suit, which does not allow water to enter. It requires some extra training, but provides extra warmth and comfort. The 
a little air in, I was sinking perhaps a little too deeply. We soon came upon a sunken forest. It was actually quite creepy when I was down there. The dive was not entirely uneventful. Keep your kit in order. to bar 5.2 meters always know how much air you have and make sure you're not exceeding your maximum operating depth here we came across one of the very few attractions that the site had to offer some sunken old vehicles from a nearby amusement park we lingered here for some considerable period of time, writing rude messages in the algae. Here we can see clearly the limitations of a torch. While dive torches are incredibly powerful and extremely useful in dark conditions, when the lack of light is due primarily to murk rather than darkness, they do rather serve merely to light up the murk, so they can still be useful. And before you ask mum, yes, I did put the stuff in my ears afterwards. Discovered the wheel sunk into the mud in the front of the car. We ourselves had to be careful not to get sucked down into the mud. It was extremely sticky at the bottom. Lakes are genuinely, generally not particularly pleasant diving spots, however they are great for training, as they lack any kind of current, often in sheltered conditions. Conditions on this day's diving were fair, with the light shower later on. Maintaining buoyancy was quite difficult, particularly as it was fresh water. Fresh water, of course, is different to salt water in that it requires far less weight to keep you down as you are relatively less buoyant. It's always difficult to adjust between salt and fresh water. Learn your personal weight requirements always bear them in mind remember they will be different salt versus fresh water at this point we decided to move on ah yes there's the steering wheel other end of the different car, there are about three. Mm -hmm. 
while it is desirable to stay close to your dive body, you don't generally want to get so close that you impede each other. I managed to maneuver myself above Liam. Liam checks his compass so that he knows the bearing we need to take. Underwater navigation is a real pain. I had to do that later on for part of my training. I was probably not on top form then, as I was cold and tired. It is quite strange. Cold underwater really saps your ability to think. We came across a further group of divers while we were down there, said hello, and gradually moved on. <laughs> Liam checks his bearings once again. And gradually, we came towards the surface. Following a rope that had been laid out at a particular depth, yet another aid to dive was outside. Once more, we came across one of the training platforms, this time at a slightly shallower depth. Pause briefly to get our bearings. And then... Signal ascend. And thus we broke the surface. Fill up your air, so you will float. Keep your regulator in. And after a long day's diving, everybody getting themselves kitted off, cleaning up and taking care of your equipment. And that was our dive at Divers Cove, Surrey. Would you like to see two cats together? Rosie's made a friend. Look at that. Oh, she's so happy. She's going to fix the camera. Thank you.